Zion City Church. Let's stand up to our feet this morning. We're just going to worship God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with the song of deliverance from my enemies. Till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen. Like we believe it, church. I am. Yes, I am a child of God. We declare this morning that I am a child of God. Amen. Yes. Yes. We are so glad you're here with us.
with us at City Church this morning. If you're joining us online, we're so glad you're here with us. Why don't you greet one another right now? Maybe tell somebody something that God has done in your life this week. Good morning, all you people. continue in our worship this morning you know when it says to be still and know that I am God be still translates into let go and I don't know about you but there's a lot of things that I have to let go of and we're in the presence of God right now and we don't want anything to separate us from his presence so let's just be still right now let's just let go right now and know that he is God he is sovereign over every area of our life and we give him control. Be still and know that the Lord is in control. Be still, my soul, stand and watch as giants fall. I won't be afraid, you are here, this silence of my fear, I won't be afraid, you don't let go, be still my heart.
chapter 11 and verse 28 through 30, the word of God says this. Our Lord Jesus Christ says this. Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your very souls. For my burden is easy and my yoke is light. So oftentimes when we come into church, we find it easy to come in with a burden and then to leave with a burden. So we make it a habit where we come in and leave the same way that we've come in. But what we're about to take part in today, what you just read was a promise that Jesus just gave us as the body of Christ. And we're going to take part in a tradition that Jesus took part in called the Passover. And we know it today as communion. And so the Last Supper, what happened was Jesus did this with his disciples. And throughout history, the same celebration has been done where we take the bread and we drink the wine. But the hard part about it is Jesus said this over and over and over. And Paul said it in 1 Corinthians where he said it, do this in remembrance of me. And oftentimes if we do a tradition without putting our heart into it, we lose the effect of the tradition. But if you put your heart into it, the tradition comes to life. And the word of God says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so we do the tradition, but inside the tradition rests the product, which is what Jesus said, what the prophet Isaiah said in reference to Jesus. Check this out. In Isaiah chapter 53 and verse Number four, he says this, surely he has bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him tricking and smitten of God and afflicted. Verse five says this, but he was wounded for our transgression and he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Listen. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Yes. Listen. If you were something past tense, you are something current tense. Amen. So if you were healed, you currently are healed. All you have to do is receive it from God. So all you have to do in this very moment is put your faith in the tradition. But it's not just the tradition, it's what Jesus did at the very last supper when he said, do this in remembrance of me. So as we remember what the Father did, what Jesus did, he's going to bear every sickness that you have. Everything that we come to the table with today is forgiven, is healed, is broken, is now renewed under the power of Jesus Christ. But resting in the tradition is the power in which can change your life. Yes. So what we're going to do in this very moment is we're going to pray. 
But when we pray, all we're going to do is take inventory in our life. And I want you to ask Jesus, Jesus, listen, that one thing that I want healed, that one thing that I want changed, if you need forgiveness, today it's for you for forgiveness. If you need healing, today it's for you for healing. He says, I am that I am. Tell them that the I am sent you, and I am here to take and change whatever you're going through. Listen. So as we pray, as we pray, I need you to remember, in this very moment, this isn't a down moment. When I remember communion, it's a celebration that the blood of Jesus Christ broke the back of sin, death, hell, and disease. Broke it. So when you take it, it's not down, it's a celebration. Thank you, Jesus, for taking every stripe on your back for me. Thank you for healing my family. Thank you for changing my life. That's what it is today. But if you realize that, that's where it has the effect to change you. It's in the ritual that when you meet the heart of it, it changes everything about you. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, in this house, rest people that need you. In this very moment, God, we understand that the blood of Jesus Christ has power that lasts for eternity. And God, every sin that we're going to commit is covered. God, we thank you. All we have to do is walk underneath the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so in this very moment, God, we remember every stripe that you took for me, for me personally. And God, as an act of worship today, we ask that, Lord, you would meet us right here in this very place. And Lord, as we get up and we come down and take communion, Father, may this not just be a ritual, but may it be an act of worship. May we do so in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. The altars are now open for you to come and serve yourself. Let's worship.
attitude of worship this morning. Listen, we're a family, and so we want our worship team to have the chance to take communion with us this morning. They didn't get a chance in first service. And you know, this is about communing with God, but it's about us coming together and communing with God. And so let's make sure everybody gets a chance. We're going to give them a chance to receive and pray one more time. If you have not received communion yet and you've been holding off for any reason, you guys don't have to play. You can stop playing. I like Stop this playing. <laughs> it's worship. <laughs> this is important that we do this as the family of God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes. Anybody wanted to jump up and help me would have been welcome to. <laughs> it's fun to watch too, though, you know. <laughs> Isn't Tim doing a great job? I'm doing a great job. All right, Lord Jesus, this morning, as we finish up this time of communion and we place you first, we give others, we let go, Father God, of the debts of life that have stored up, and we recognize that your body and your blood has paid it all. We do this in remembrance of you, God. Let this be a healing moment, a powerful moment, and a worship moment, even when the instruments aren't playing. Let it be a moment of worship as we receive these elements this morning. the body and the blood of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Without it, Lord, we would be lost, but we're found because of it. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, I wanted us to do that because membership class is coming up, and it's all about us being in this together. Let's watch this video clip as Pastor Alex comes to make announcements. You may be seated. Thanks, 
They say there is no I in tea. They say that coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. And working together is a success. Together, we can serve our neighbor. Together, we can unify our community. Together, we can be light in the dark. Together, we can. We need each other. We rely on each other. We hold on to each other. Let's do this together. But here's the good news. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of eternal life is through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you might ask today, how do I know that God loves me? Because while we were enemies, while we were at odds with God, he demonstrated and proved his love for you by Jesus dying on the cross for your sins. That's how we know. And so your sins are forgiven because of what Christ has done. And that's something to celebrate and worship about. Amen? I was expecting that to come up. But that's cool because we just signed up a new city group for Thursdays starting the end of March. So that's awesome. Glad all five of you. Thanks. <laughs> so God is moving. Great things are happening. Other great things happening in the church is Tim mentioned really briefly about membership class. So that is going to be next week. That is going to be 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. So if you want to join the church and know more about the church, please come to membership. If you've taken 101, Please join me for 201. We'll be talking about leadership, what ministry is, how to get involved in ministry, and how to use your spiritual gifts. So that'll be all next week from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. Another great thing that's happening in life of the church is the Cashmans are coming. All right, let me tell you. I know you're there. The Cashmans are coming. There you are, church. I knew you were coming. Okay, so they're going to be here for a surprise Sunday. That's going to be March 15th, so surprise. <laughs> March 27th, they're going to be doing a concert here at the church. You're going to have more information about that. They're going to be selling tickets next week out in the front lobby, so you're going to want to pick it up. The other thing is we had a great renewal service last night. A lot of you recommitted your marriages back to Christ, and it was powerful. But some of you might not have been able to get a certificate. We do have certificates available to you out on the welcome table. So you're more than welcome to pick one up. And then the last, very last thing is we're looking for people to come and help with the building. Repairs, repainting. God's doing a lot of great work. Look, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We're going to be talking about that next week. But God has given us this building to do his work. And it's not about the building. I get it. But it is a place that we all meet, and we invite people to come hear the gospel. So we want to be good stewards of that, and we want to give back to God what he's given to us. So we want this building to look nice and presentable, so God's blessing us. And so if you want to sign up for that, sign up. You have construction or building or contractor um, experience. There's another form on the back of the membership of all the different areas that you can sign up, and Curtis Clark will be very, very happy with you. All right, so we are going to get ready for the offering. Who's excited to give the offering to give back to God? You know why you're excited about that? You're excited because you see the move of God. You see the blessings of God in your life. You know that when you give, he gives back. And look, this isn't like, you know, we're manipulating God or we're trying to make some contract with God. Look, if I give this, you're going to give this. That's not what this is about. We know that our God meets all our needs according to his riches and glories in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, you don't need to worry about your life. You don't need to worry about what you're going to drink or eat or where you're going to live or what clothes or what food. Your heavenly father already knows you need him, right? He already knows you need him. 
but seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And so that's one way that God blesses us. And so we give offering to thank him. Because, look, we just took communion. And communion means that God gave it all for you on the cross. He gave it all. And this isn't the only way we thank him, but this is one of the ways we thank him for what he did. And so that's why we get excited about giving and offering, because we know God can take what we give and multiply it. Not so we can get rich, because we're already rich in him anyway, but so that he, we can be a blessing to other people. That's why we're excited about offering. So we're going to take, so we're going to pray, and we're going to take up the offering, and we're going to continue with worship. Father God, we thank you that you meet all our needs. You take care of us that you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. We don't need to worry about it. You take care of the sparrows. You take care of the birds. You take care of the animals. They don't gather. They don't harvest. But you still take care of them. How much more are we more precious to you than them? And so, Father God, we give this offering, we give this finances, this money back to you to thank you for all that you've done. And we pray, God, that you use it in any way to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. We've come to join the song So long before our lives To raise our voice along Heaven and earth alive We've seen your faithful See you. We're gonna lift our praises to Jesus this morning. Oh, the praise is a 
God, I'm broken. I've spent my life dishonoring you. Years of turning my back to you. Time and time again, I put myself before you, and yet I have the nerve to act like you owe me something. But I am nothing. Just a speck in the middle of the universe, just a tiny dot that could be wiped away in the blink of an eye, and yet you see me. You see my heart. You see my pain. You see my need for hope, my need for love, my need for a savior. But you alone are king. And I recognize now that I can't do this on my own. I recognize that without you, I am nothing. And I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm asking for hope. Jesus, I am asking for you to save me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation. Create a pure heart and renew a right spirit within me. Take away my sin and make me like you. Jesus, be my hope, be my joy, be my strength, be my king. Jesus, be my hope, be my joy, be my strength, be my king. All right, good morning. We've been in the middle of this exciting series that is called Renew All. And um, Emery, you might have to turn the board all the way off and back on. You've got a lot of blinking lights going on up here. Or turn all the faders all the way up so that that message isn't going through to them. Um, We've been in the middle of this series called Renew All. And it's been an exciting series. Two weeks ago, we looked at the life of Gideon and how Gideon received a new name, a brand new name. He had been hiding out trying to protect his bank account because back then food was money. Back then the crops were money. And he'd been hiding out trying to protect everything that he had from Midian. And God comes to him as he cowers near a wine press. You ever hide some Oreos in the microwave hoping nobody will find them? Anybody ever do that? You ever try to hold on to something that you don't want anyone else to hold up? And God finds him. The angel of the Lord is sent and finds him hiding out like a big chicken and says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gives him a brand new name. I want to tell you today that we've got to walk in the new name. We've got to live in the new name. Do you hear me this morning, church? I'm not talking about with our walk with God that it is a sign-up sheet for a bake sale. A lot of times we treat it like some kind of a a sign-up sheet or a Facebook invite right on Facebook Um, It's so cool because you can say, yes, I'm going to your party or event. No, I'm not going. Or you can say, maybe. And we get excited. It's like a thousand people said, maybe. Sometimes in our walk with God, it's like that. Well, God, I said maybe. I said maybe I'd show up. Maybe I'd walk in the new name. It's not what it's supposed to be. We are called not just to sign up or say, maybe I'll go, or, or yes, I'll be at the PTA meeting. We are called to enlist like a soldier. We are called to enlist, to sign our life away, to swear our allegiance to Jesus. It's one thing to join a club. It's another thing to enlist for service, to give our life in service. But that's just what Jesus did. Look at our first verse this morning from Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. And it says, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, there's a parallel with our men and women that serve as first responders or in our armed forces. I'm thankful for them. Every week I am here and around the world as they serve. They show us a physical picture of what service is all about, laying down and sacrificing their lives to keep our lives safe. In the same way, we should enlist and serve God. Love is our weapon, men. The battle is won. We just need to walk onward and upward to the Lord. We are a soldier in God's army under command. And when we, when we left Gideon two weeks ago, he questioned everything God was doing. And you and I do the same thing 
questioned the past. He questioned the present. He questioned the job. He questioned the future. He certainly did not live up to his name of mighty warrior. But God still believed in him. Now, I want you to know what Gideon's name actually meant when you research it was one who cuts down. And it was referring to cutting down trees. In fact, the literal uh, translation is feller. So I guess Gideon was a nice feller if you really look at look. You know, and that was the literal t- translation. And so God says, Gideon, yes, you are a feller. Yes, you are one who cuts down. But you're not going to cut down people with words. And you're not going to cut down trees. I have a plan for you to cut down the enemy. Serve me. You'll live up to the name. Mighty warrior. All this while again, Gideon and all of Israel are living in fear. Consumed by fear. You know, fear does consume our lives. How many times have you gone to do something and a fear comes up and you say, I'm not going to do it. How many times have you moved from an area or moved on from a relationship or moved on from a job because of fear of what might happen? I hope it wasn't fear that someone will find out what's really going on in your life. Fear controls. Uh, Fear moves and directs us. And God comes in and he says, let the fear be gone. And what I want to talk to you about today is the God of peace. Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. Because we're going to end our message and kind of start it right there. Gideon is the first one. As God gives him this new name, Mighty Warrior. Gideon is the first one to use the name in regards to God, Jehovah Shalom. The first one, over a hundred times it's in the Bible, but the first guy to say it is Gideon. And so as God takes away the fear and gives us a new name, we recognize that he is the Lord of peace. Now, a stranger approached the pastor after church, and he said to him, Pastor, I need you to pray for my hearing. And so the pastor, just kind of de- like down front this morning, the pastor got energized and excited, and boy, he laid hands on the guy's ears, and he said, Lord, let him hear again, and open his ears, and he just had this impassioned prayer, and he looked at the guy, and the guy went to walk away, and he pulled him back, and he said, Brother, tell me how your hearing is now. And the guy said, Well, Pastor, my hearing's Wednesday, Wednesday at the courthouse. So sometimes we hear it wrong. Sometimes we miss the mark. And so Gideon's response is so honest to God. God says, mighty warrior, go with what you have. And the enemy is so overwhelming. We talked about it two weeks ago. They have taken everything. They've taken everything that is growth, everything that is good out of the people's lives. And so Gideon's response is, is so natural because he says, God, I didn't hear you right. You know, Jimmy Stewart would have said, oh, say it in my good ear. You know, I, I didn't hear you right. I didn't hear what you said. There's no way that you said I'm a mighty warrior or that we're going to overcome or to go with what I have. I have nothing. But God looks and says, don't focus on the past. Don't even focus on what you have in the present. Your future is right. Hear what I say about you. That's for somebody this morning. Hear what I say about you. God said to Gideon, and he says it to you this morning, am I not sending you? Am I not sending you? Whatever you face, I'm with you. You're a mighty warrior. No matter if you're scared, hiding in your man cave or your she shed, it doesn't matter. I am with you. And so Gideon, he wants to believe it, and we want to believe it. And we want to believe God is with me. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And then we look at the, le- the list that Paul had there. Oh, man, and hunger. And fa- oh, I don't like that list. Gideon wanted to believe it. He wanted to have hope that this was real, that this was going to happen, that God was sending him. So here he's standing to the angel of the Lord. And he, he asked him something that I believe we need to ask for today. And I believe it's something that we do ask for every day or every week. He asked him for this in his renewal moment. Judges chapter 6, we're in the new territory. Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. So what he's saying is, show me it's really you, God. Show me this is really you. Give me a sign. You ever ask for a sign? God, just show me a sign. Just just show me somehow 
that it's you. There was a little boy who was having a, a, a rough time, and he said, Lord, just give me a sign that you love me. And his mom was praying, and he was praying. They'd moved to a new area. He didn't have any friends, and he saw a rainbow across the sky right as he was praying. And he looked. He goes, Mama, look, there's a double rainbow. And his mom goes, isn't it amazing? You know, God painted that just for you to let you know he's there. And the little boy said, yeah, and he did it all with his left hand. His mom said, what are you talking about? He says, Mama, I learned in church that, that Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. So he must have painted it with his left hand. You ever prayed for a sign, said, God, give me a sign that it's really you. And I love this. Here's what happens. Because it's not just praying for a sign, but Gideon does what we need to do as we pray for the sign. And this is where we miss it. He brings an offering to God. He brings his best to God. The part of verse 18 at the end says, And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. How amazing that God would wait on us. Come on, I love you so much. I'm watching you. and I'm not leaving. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to dive into me. I'm waiting for you to bring your best. I'm waiting for you to believe the name I've given you. That name of mighty words. You know, the word says it over and over again. You're more than a conqueror. You're highly favored. You're a son or daughter of the most high, a priest or a priestess of almighty God. I'm a child of God loved and favored. Amen? That's what God says. And yet we hear so many echoes of the devil. We hear so many other voices. Sometimes they sound like the voice of our mom or dad or an ex-husband or wife. We hear so many other voices when God says, I'm waiting right here. And I am the same yesterday, tomorrow, and forever. And today I am there. So look here what he does. It's so important. It's so critical for us because we stand at a critical moment in our history right here on the Treasure Coast in America, in the world. This is a year for renewal and revival. Amen? Will we do what Gideon did in spite of our doubts or our hearing problems? Will we do what God wants no matter what the world has named or branded us? Will we do what Gideon did in, in spite of the past? Will we do what Gideon did no matter how little our strength or our resources seem. Gideon's been beaten down over and over and over again, but he takes a step of faith. And I want you to notice that a renew all is a journey. A renew all is a journey. See, we, we came down this morning and had an amazing moment of communion, of communing with God. And we've had moments over here on this cross where we filled it up. And, you know, if I step off, nobody will be able to see me online, so I'll just step off for a minute so they know. So we, we filled up this cross weeks ago with people saying, um, I am this, but God says, today God has declared me to be deeply loved, completely forgiven, fully pleasing, totally accepted, complete in Christ, a brand new creation. And so we took a moment of renewal to say, I'm putting it on the cross, and I'm no longer what the world says or even what I have said or what I've done. I am now a child of God. I'm a mighty warrior. We took a moment to do that. That's just a moment because renewal is a journey. It's a journey. It's a process. Each step is a step of faith. One of my brothers that's watching online calls it the tour of trust. The tour of trust because you enlist and then you get put on the tour of trust. And it begins by giving God everything. Remember last week, if you were here last week, and if you're a first-time guest, thank you for being here. We're so honored to have you with us. But last week, uh, we looked at the woman with the alabaster jar that poured out her best, poured out everything, gave it to Jesus. Gideon's going to do the same thing in a different way. Verse 19, does anybody like the cooking channel or watch those shows on TV where they cook and have contests, anybody like that? All right, we're going Old Testament cooking channel just for a verse here. So let's look at it. Gideon went inside, prepared a young goat, and from an ephah of flour, he made bread without yeast. That was the yeast that he could do at that time. So putting the meat... One of you got it. Putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot, he brought them out and offered them to him, the angel of the Lord, under the oak. So we have a verse where Gideon puts on a chef hat and he goes inside and he cooks a meal. What's the big deal, Pastor Tim? Here's the big deal. These people have nothing. This was the kind of meal that you would have at a wedding feast at this time. 
This was the kind of meal you would have at the biggest celebration that you could ever have maybe once a year when you could come out of hiding. And so Gideon takes the best that he has. This is like any resource you might have. Because for us, yes, food is a resource, but back here, food was everything. Crops were everything. Rain was everything. And so he brings the best that he has. He can't spare this. He cannot spare this. But he brings the best that he has. This is an extravagant meal. And they've lost everything. So how does he come up with this? Here's how. God said, come and serve me with what you have. The resources were little. But Gideon brings this as a sacrifice. When I sacrifice, and that's what a renewal requires, when I sacrifice, it costs me something. It costs me dearly. You have to prepare something of value and feed it to the kingdom of God. Give it to the kingdom of God. Let go of it to the kingdom of, of God. You don't, you don't bring your extravagant meal and say, Lord, here's the best that I have. You want to go Dutch and split it with me, Lord? How about you take the leg and I'll take the chicken thigh? How about that? He gives it all. Let's see what happens with it and let's see what this is all about. This sign that Gideon asks for. Remember, it starts, the sign starts with him sacrificing his best. Usually I'd like the sign first. Don't be there. God, drop a million dollars from heaven as a sign and I'll give you 10%. Pretty ridiculous, isn't it? That's what we do. It's what we do time and time again. And so Gideon has to make the sacrifice and give up of what he has before he gets the sign. I love the fact that Gideon prepared it himself, that he went on, put, in a, put on the shaft hat, hat, got in the kitchen, and makes some goat pot pie or whatever it was. So how will the angel of the Lord, the living word of God, consume this food? What will the sign be? What happens? Let's take a look at verse 20. The angel of God said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock, and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread, in verse 21, with the tip of the staff that was in his hand. It's, it's an unbelievable moment. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared i mean talk about a sign there's a lot to unpack there's a lot going on here the angel of god takes this extravagant sacrificial meal and shows he is not a man that needs a fork or his hands or his mouth no instead by touching it with the tip of his staff the rock turns to fire did you understand that that's important if you're taking notes fire comes from the rock fire comes from the rock Fire comes from the rock. I got my little sound going with it. Fire comes from the rock. I hear my music in the background. Fire comes from the rock. And so when we get with the rock, Jesus Christ, the rock that doesn't roll, the rock of our salvation, the rock of ages, when we get with Jesus Christ, that's when we see the fire in our lives. Amen? Amen. Who needs the Son of God to touch your sacrifice today? Who needs the fire of God? It comes from the rock, amen? amen? When he touches your sacrifice, fire comes from the rock. Now, this showed Gideon that God was pleased with his sacrifice because in the Old Testament, when God was happy, he burned it up. Take, take, take a look at a guy named Elijah, right? Fire fell from heaven. We sing a song, fire fall down, fall down on me. And so when God was pleased, it was a beautiful aroma, and it, it, burnt, it burnt up, and it raised up to the heavens. And so this shows Gideon that he's not a man, that he is of God, I believe the living word of, of God here. And we see that God is pleased with his sacrifice, with him giving his best, with him giving everything. And then if that's not enough, the guy goes Star Trek and beam me up, Scotty, is gone. The angel of the Lord disappeared. All of this confirms the calling God has on Gideon's life. All of this confirms the new name that God has given him and has given you today, mighty warrior. And in fact, it also confirms in advance that the victory is already signed, sealed, 
and we are delivered. Amen? All he had to do was give up. He was hiding some wheat by the wine press, a little hideout. All he had to do was give up his best, have it burned up in front of him, and have the angel of the Lord disappear. Verse 22, when Gideon realized, you see, your eyes are open. You start to be able to hear God when you live a sacrificial life. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Alas, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. It reminds me of Luke 24, 31. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And just like the angel of the Lord, he disappeared from their sight. Such a parallel here. But here's the great thing for us today in 2020. God doesn't leave us hanging out in a moment of excitement. God doesn't leave us in that realization that our sacrifice was blessed and then we're just all alone. He never leaves us. He lets us know, even if you've never heard him speak into your life before. By the way, if you want to hear God's voice, get in God's word. Even if you've never heard the voice of his spirit or heard his voice before, God will speak to you and let you know in this moment it's going to be all right, God's response, Judges 6. And this is the thing. When he realizes who it is, we know that he's scared to death. We know that because of what is said to him. But the Lord said to him, verse 23, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. Do you see what happened? Just a little while ago, Gideon didn't even believe that God was there or cared about his people or cared about his life or cared about his family or cared about his situation or cared about his country or cared about anything. God told him what was going to happen and he said, I, I haven't seen God around these parts. I haven't seen God do anything. Just a few moments ago, Gideon didn't even believe that God was there or cared. And now Gideon, because of a sacrifice and a sign, is hearing the voice of the Lord. He, you understand, he disappeared. The angel disappeared. You understand that? He's gone. And so Gideon is now hearing in his heart, in his mind, the voice of God. Now, I hear God's voice more clearly when I renew my relationship with him. When I sacrifice, this is gigantic. We need to achieve an aim for this level of faith and relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the passionate pursuit of a daily relationship with God. That's why our vision here at City Church is to lead every person on the Treasure Coast into a personal relationship with the person of Jesus Christ so that they can talk to God, hear from God, listen to God, and obey God, not just an hour and a half a week, but all week long. Amen? The angel is physically gone, but God's presence, his voice, his calling on the life of the mighty warriors has just begun, and it's just beginning for us today. I'll start singing Mighty Warrior again. I heard my music again, but it's all right. If we renew our commitment, if we lay down our life, if we sacrifice, I know it's a step of faith. But even when the physical manifestation has left, even when the miracle is over, that encounter should build our faith for a lifetime to listen for and know the voice of the Spirit. Remember, we are enlisting, not signing up. We are enlisting to serve for life. And Gideon is ready to serve, to give, to go on a mission, to be a soldier, to be the mighty warrior God's called him to be. And so he gives God the praise. And guess what he does? It's exactly what we should do, what every one of us should do. He invests more time. He goes out and he builds an altar to the Lord. More time, more effort. And we don't have time to go into it today. More risk that he's building an altar to God in a place where a lot of the people are going to want to kill him when they see that he's built something to God. And so verse 24, so Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. To this day it stands in Ophrah of the Abyssalites. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. I told you the first time that it's used in scripture, God called Gideon by a new name, Mighty Warrior. And he communicates with God by a name that is new in the Old Testament, new to Gideon. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God of peace. 
what today can this message, can this altar, can this epiphany moment, can this new name of God say to you and I? Well, I want you to understand Jesus knew that you and I would face heartache and harm in our lives. And he knew that to this day, the biggest battle we have is the battle of fear. The fear of, will these people that I love reject me if I embrace God? The fear of, who am I really? Deep down inside, do I want anyone to ever see it? The fear of people finding out who I really am <laughs> or seeing who I really am. Fear of the truth, fear of the lies, fear of the past, fear of the future, fear that we're not going to have the money to pay our bills, fear that we're not going to get well, fear that no one's ever really going to love us. Fear causes us to lose the blessing and the communication of God in our lives. And Jesus never wanted any of us to live in fear. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. That's John 14, 27. Jesus says, these things I've spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. Jehovah Shalom. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. And in Christ we can overcome all fear. 1 Peter 5, 7 says we are called to cast all our cares and anxiety on him because he cares for us. I want you to understand today that peace is the antidote to fear. Peace is what defeats fear. Peace overcomes fear. Uh, a writer once said this, Jehovah Shalom provides perspective, encourages hope, builds confidence, inspires courage, and affirms trust in the power of God. In a world where people are increasingly overwhelmed by stress, conflict, depression, anxiety, and financial, emotional, and physical uncertainty, the presence of Jehovah Shalom provides a peace that passes all understanding. Amen? We cannot control, church, church, hold on. We cannot control the uncertainties of our life. We cannot control the uncertainties circumstances that we go through but in the presence of jehovah shalom we find hope joy strength and peace to face each day and god calls you and i today just like he did gideon i want you to listen to the word of god let's close our eyes in this moment close your eyes listen to how god defines you listen to his love for you and in your worth your true worth to his kingdom. Let the peace of Jehovah Shalom fill your heart as you hear Isaiah 41, 9 through 10 with our eyes closed. Listen, God says, I took you from the ends of the earth. From its farthest corners, I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's what God says. Jehovah Shalom says, don't fear I'm with you. Don't be dismayed I'm your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll uphold you when you feel like you can't stand with my righteous right hand. Today God calls us just like he did Gideon. He looks at you, whatever you're facing, and he says, you are a mighty warrior. When you feel like giving up, when you feel like giving in, when you feel like hiding out or getting out of town, remember this, you're not alone, Jehovah Shalom is there. When we serve God, God is with us. No matter what we face, we need to see this every single day. When fear rises up, I'm with Daddy God. I'm with Daddy. I'm with Daddy God. What's the direction he has for my life? Onward, Christian soldier. I'm with Daddy God. 1 John 5, 4 through 5. And then I'm going to ask our worship team to go ahead and start coming up this morning. It says this, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. What do we need to lay down today? What do we need to cook up and, and serve today to let go of, to feed God's kingdom?
today. Come on up, guys. Come on up. If we believe it today, if we believe it today, then we will receive it. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Your actions will follow. If you believe in him, you will live for him. You will seek to hear his voice and obey that today is your day to make that choice, to live this life, to renew your relationship to him today. And listen, I've got to make this clear as we begin to, to play some worship music here in the background. We don't get to heaven uh, or renewal by doing good things. We don't get there by doing good things. We get there by knowing Jesus. The price he paid with his blood on the cross. We're all going to die one day. Every one of us. We've got to ask him to come into our hearts. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. The Lord is peace. We've got to ask him to come into our hearts. Receive him today and believe him for the rest of our lives. He loves you, church. He loves us all. He wants to lead and guide us daily. He died to know us so we could truly live today, tomorrow, and for eternity with them. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes this morning. Maybe you're out there today and you are praying for peace because you have been lost in fear. Today is your day for a renew all moment. Today is your day for a renew all moment. The question is, will you lay it down at the feet of Jesus? Will you lay it down? Will you choose to sacrifice like Gideon did today? Will you choose to know him and hear his voice today? So I don't know exactly what everyone is facing out here, but I know that when we live a fear-based life, we are handcuffed, shackled, and held back from the abundant life God has for us. And so if you're out here this morning with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, you can say, Pastor Tim, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you today because I have been living in fear. I have been smothered by fear. I've been held back by fear. And this morning, I want a peace that passes all understanding. I want to release the fear of what today or tomorrow will bring and trust God that the future is bright indeed. Pastor Tim, today I need Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. The peace of God to flow into my life. And so I'm laying my sacrifice out there. I'm letting go of my resource today so that the peace of God will flow into my life and so that I can hear the voice of God in my life. If that's you, you're out here this morning and say, I've been held back by fear this week, this month, this year, and I'm letting it go. Just raise up your hand. Jehovah, amen. Yes, yes, all over, the, all, all over this place, all over this place. I'm telling you, the devil has lost this morning. The devil has lost this morning. You pray this with me wherever you are. Say, God, today I choose to give you my life. Today I choose hope. And I choose your peace. And I choose your plan. And I ask you to deliver me from fear. I ask you, Lord, to take away the fear. God, today I choose to enlist in your army not just volunteer, not just say maybe, but I choose to enlist today and give my life to you. And say this if you're out there and you're struggling with fear, say, God, I call on your name. I believe in you. Forgive my sin today. Be my Lord and Savior. Jehovah Shalom. God of all peace rush into my life like a mighty river and let all the fear flow out let all the fear fly away let all the fear be defeated in Jesus name this morning now if you're free and you know it say amen amen let's stand up to our feet let's sing this out
Have a great Sunday. We love you. God bless you.